The MCU just gave us the most powerful villain we've ever seen in the superhero franchise, and I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. What if it not only introduced Ultron Vision, who with the Mind Stone successfully conquered Earth, but then loaded him up with the rest of the Infinity Stones and the uber baddie started taking his conquest across different universes? Today's video will rank all of Ultron Vision's powers that were on display. Which was his weakest? What was his most powerful? Let's dig into it right now. I I can see everything. No one can stop me now. So before we start diving into the powers that Ultron Vision displayed after he got the Infinity Stones, I think it's important to first establish the powers that regular Ultron Vision had. And man, okay guys, we have to do something about this name. Ultron Vision? That's clunkier than Tony Stark's first suit. I know we can just call him Ultron and that's overall cleaner, but it's weird seeing him with Vision's face, right? What else works? Uh, Vistron? Ultshin? Dr. Robotnik? No, that's already taken. Ultra Vision? Okay, I like that one a bit more, but it sounds like a spin-off of WandaVision. Oh, but now can you imagine a show called Ultravision where it's Ultron and Vision struggling to share the same body as they work at, I don't know, their uncle's bar in New York City? That story just writes itself. Okay, I'm way off track here. We were talking about the powers that Ultravision had before he got the rest of the Infinity Stones. And really, that mainly means he just had the Mind Stone to work with. In a controversial moment, Thanos came knocking on Earth's door and was immediately cut in half by Vision. Whoa, cut in half? Like he wanted to half the universe's overall population? Man, only the what-if writers would make something so funny out of such a gruesome scene. Anyways, this moment has been talked about a lot. Does it make Thanos look weaker in your eyes? Does it mean the Mind Stone is the most powerful? What we can say is that putting the Mind Stone in the possession of a super analytical and hyper-intelligent AI is possibly the best combination ever. Ultra Vision beat Thanos because he didn't hesitate, didn't stop and think, and most importantly, didn't quip. He just got straight to business, and that allowed him to gain the upper hand and acquire the rest of the Infinity Stones. Makes you think that Thanos probably could have won a lot of fights if he wasn't so chatty, right? So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Ultravision is actually a robot. Yeah, that's right. I know you might have thought it was just someone who sounds like they were doing a slight James Spader impression with pretty satisfactory results, but nope, Ultravision is all machine. And the reason that this is important is because robots are basically the wizards of the mechanical world, meaning they have the ability to talk to one another. This was evident in the What If episode by the implementation of The Hive, which is the interconnected series of robots that all report back to Ultravision. Now, I'm putting this so low because this isn't exactly an Infinity Stone power, but it was something that the Infinity Stones definitely made easier. Like, with a snap of his fingers, Ultravision made an army of robots and didn't need to use any particular Infinity Stone power in order to control them. In the original Age of Ultron, these robots, which were called Sentries, were mass-produced by Ultron using things like Wolfgang Von Strucker's prototypes, but now there was no need in this universe as Ultravision could just make an infinite amount on a whim. And the Hive is what allowed Ultravision to conquer everything. Not only were they a disposable army that could overwhelm the likes of Sakaar, the Sovereign, and Ego the Living Planet, but they could all report back to Ultron and allow him to keep an eye on everything in the universe. It's why the opening scene of Episode 8 of What If is so thrilling. Not only do Clint and Natasha have to deal with all these sentries, they also have to do it in a very short amount of time or else they'll immediately send data back to Ultravision. It's a great Great power to have if you're a villain, but extremely annoying if you're the hero who has to stop it. Okay, this next power was an interesting one, and it's one that I didn't quite understand how it worked. We know that Ultravision could control his robots, but he had a power that allowed him to control machines as well. Here's the scene. As Clint and Natasha fly around in the Quinjet, the rest of the Avengers are making a final stand. It looks like everyone is down for the count except for Tony, who tries one last time to convince Ultravision that he doesn't have to be a bad guy and was actually designed for good. But that's on you, Tony. If you create an AI who has access to the internet, it's only going to take a few seconds for that AI to realize that humanity is a serious headache. So because the what-if writers apparently are the founders of the I Hate Tony Stark fan club, they had Ultravision eliminate Tony as well as turn on the machines in order to launch all of the world's nukes in one fell swoop. 
But wait, what was this ability? It was sort of like an EMP blast that works the exact opposite by overloading electrical equipment to turn them on, or at least turn the councils from blue to red, which I assume means they were infected. And this was a power blast that also seemed to eliminate Tony Stark for the 85th time in the series. So what exactly was this blast? Is it something that turns on all electrical equipment nearby and that's why all the nukes launched? And did the blast overload Tony's suit and fry him to give him a crispy body like the one in Endgame? And it didn't necessarily come from his forehead, which suggests that it wasn't a Mind Stone power, but it has to be, right? I know this is incredibly nitpicky and really this power seems strong enough that it should go later on this list, but it's a little too ill-defined, so near the bottom it shall remain. Okay, I promise you, this is the last power from Ultra Vision before he gets the Infinity Stones, but it's an important one to mention. There's a power that I don't think is exactly defined, and it's unclear if it comes from the Mind Stone or if it's just Ultra Vision being able to control robots, but he has what looks like nanobots at his disposal that show up a few times in the 8th and 9th episode of What If. After Ultra Vision cuts Thanos in half like he's made of butter, the evil robot eyes the Infinity Stones. Then, using what looks to be nanobots, is able to grab the Infinity Stones and form them around his body in a new suit of armor. That's kind of cool, right? He's able to form armor around his body much like Tony Stark could in Infinity War and Endgame. Already, that's a pretty devastating power on its own that could do some serious damage to our heroes. But then, surprisingly, the ability pops up again at the end after Ultra Vision is defeated, which implies that this is not a specific Mind Stone power. After Arnim Zola fries Ultra Vision's body, Killmonger uses one of the Sentry robot heads to do the exact same thing, meaning he uses the nanobots to pick up the stones and craft them around his body. How does this work? How does Killmonger have control of the Sentry Head in order to break down Ultra Vision's armor and transfer it to himself? This is another power that looks really cool, but if you break down exactly how it's supposed to work, it starts to fall apart. So enough about all these, let's get on to the big Infinity Stone stuff. Okay, so now that we're in the Infinity Stone stage, I'm putting the lowest one as Ultra Vision's new increased level of consciousness. On one hand, you can say that this was his most visually boring new ability, but it's also arguably the most important. Having all the Infinity Stones and presumably being paired with his robot brain opened Ultra Vision's eyes to the fact that this was not the only universe out there. But I actually don't know. Did the Infinity Stones really help alert Ultra Vision about other universes, or was it just the fact that the watch was talking super loudly into his ear. I mean, yes, the Infinity Stones grant unparalleled power, but the Watcher was just right there blabbing on and on about the fact that Ultra Vision was now alone forever. It's like if you're at a movie theater and you're trying to watch the movie, but behind you there's someone on their phone talking over everything. And then when you tell that person to shush, they look at you with that, oh, you could hear that look that drives you crazy. And also, evil Doctor Strange heard the Watcher too when he was losing control, so maybe it's not just an Infinity Stone thing. Or possibly it's just a case where the Watcher talking alerted Ultra Vision and told him where to listen. Like, if the Watcher was busy watching some other universe, maybe Ultra Vision would have picked up Kang the Conqueror signals instead and went off to destroy those universes. As we know now, the multiverse is a vast place, and maybe with the help of Infinity Stones, you can use them to pinpoint certain universes. All you have to do is listen closely. Oh, and probably silence every other sound in the universe. That helps too. After the Guardians of the Multiverse go through the whole ordeal of stealing away the Infinity Stones and then using New Gamora's fancy new Infinity Stone Crusher machine to try to destroy all the stones, the heroes realize that this would never have actually worked. It's said that every universe is just a fraction different than others, which means the Infinity Crusher would only work on the stones from her universe. Which, I get this was all part of the plan, I guess, but it's actually pretty manipulative for the Watcher to call all these heroes together only to lie to them about their main objective. And doesn't Ultra Vision confirming that each stone is slightly different in each universe confirm the idea that the Ultra Vision shouldn't have any power in any universe other than his own? Oh, never mind. It's a cartoon. Just sit back and have fun. But after that whole ordeal, Ultra Vision displays what can only be described as a flashy power. As the Guardians of the Multiverse get their hero shot, the evil robot's voice appears like it's everywhere and coming from all sides, making Ultra Vision seem bigger than he actually is. Every universe is different, each one just a fraction unique. This feels more like a parlor trick rather than official power, because if Ultra Vision was trying to intimidate the new heroes, it really didn't work. 
I like how Ultra Vision followed the age-old piece of advice. If you can't beat them, then turn yourself into a giant rampaging robot and try to beat them that way. At least I think that's how that saying goes. This moment happens within the middle of the Guardians in the Ultra Vision fight. Annoyed that he can't just eliminate these pests who are buzzing around him like flies, Ultra Vision then grows into a giant robot that Scott Lang would probably envy. Although this is a cool concept, very Power Rangers-esque, it actually doesn't last long, as evil Doctor Strange unleashes some of the coped up power within him and unleashes the bits of Hydra's champion in order to fight the giant robot. Come on, a giant metal robot versus a giant squid monster? How cool is that? But my main question is, is it clear what stone he used to turn himself into a giant robot? Like just on paper, it would have to be the reality stone, right? It just hasn't been used in that particular way before. If you can use the reality stone to alter your appearance and make things, then is it possible that Tony could have used the reality stone to make himself a stronger suit of armor before he snapped his fingers to bring everyone back? I'm just asking. And also, although the reality stone lights up as Ultra Vision grows, so does the Power Stone for some strange reason. Any guesses why the combination of the reality stone and the Power Stone help Ultra Vision grow? These next few abilities will highlight just how Ultra Vision used the Infinity Stones to his advantage, and it begs the question, which is the most useful stone to have? I think you could make the case for the Space Stone, which allows for instant teleportation and travel to anywhere in the universe. Thanos used the teleportation ability to great effect, always popping out of portals with the swagger of someone who knows they're the strongest person in the universe. Seriously, the way Thanos walks out of portals in both Infinity War and Episode 8 of What If should book him some modeling gigs somewhere. Anyway, Ultra Vision had less style when using the Space Stone, but it helped him conquer the universe with relative ease. He used it for minor things, like when the Watcher hit him and the evil robot went flying through the Watcher's magical watching area thing, only to appear right behind the Watcher to attack. And then, of course, he used it to jump around to different planets to destroy them. But again, if the Space Stone is from his specific universe, wouldn't that mean he shouldn't be able to use it for teleportation in other universes? Just a question. As I sort of mentioned earlier, Ultra Vision has the special ability to have a hive mind with his sentries, something that's incredibly useful for keeping an eye over everything. But the way he actually gets his sentries is by using the Reality Stone to instantly make an infinite army of them, which is an upgrade that's way more powerful. Like before, he had to create this whole system of making sentries and then have those sentries build other sentries, etc. But with the Reality Stone, he was able to make his army of sentries in seconds, which, I'm gonna be honest with you, confuse me a bit. I guess I'm not exactly sure of the limitations of the Reality Stone. If it can create sentient robots, can it also create life? No, right? It's my understanding that it was only because the robots were inorganic material that Ultra Vision was able to make his army. And then, on top of all the creation, he can also destroy and transmute matter at will. Remember in Guardians of the Galaxy when they said that the Power Stone was so dangerous that all it had to do was make contact with Xandar's surface and the whole thing would be destroyed? And then remember when that ability really didn't come into consideration in either Infinity War or Endgame? Like really, when they were on Titan or even Earth, all Thanos should have done was touch the ground and everyone would have been wiped out. But that's not an ability that Ultra Vision seemed to forget, as he used the Power Stone in a variety of effective ways. When he appears over Asgard, he immediately uses his brand new spear thingy that he made for himself and shoots a powerful purple beam down from the sky which instantly blows up Asgard and apparently all the Asgardians. It definitely highlights how powerful the Power Stone can be, which, I mean, it's called the Power Stone. It should be strong. Honestly, the Time Stone feels like the strongest stone if used properly, but Ultra Vision only ended up using it once. In theory, the Time Stone should be able to rewind any instance that Ultra Vision wants, so if he wanted to, after their first battle, Ultra Vision could have just rewound time and done things differently. But nope, what we got instead was one instance where Ultra Vision kind of slows down time where everyone starts moving in slow motion, which makes for a cool visual and almost allowed Ultra Vision to win, but I guess the rule is that another time stone can counteract the abilities of other time stones, meaning evil Doctor Strange used his own stone to counteract the effects. So this time manipulation is ranked pretty high because it should have been Ultra Vision's most powerful and unbeatable move that's used by a single stone. 
After Ultravision starts to get really frustrated, the baddie does something interesting. He seems to use the power of all his stones together to make a universe-ending Big Bang, and that's the sort of combo work I like to see. We got used to seeing both Thanos and Ultravision use each stone separately, but really I wanted to see more combination attacks, and this one really delivered. With one thought, Ultravision ignited a massive explosion that seemingly was about to destroy the whole universe, until... And this is going to sound weird to say, Evil Doctor Strange absorbed and ate the explosion? Which, uh, sure. Okay, here's the top ability. Yes, it may not be the most powerful, but it certainly looked the coolest. When Ultravision fought the Watcher through multiple universes, there was one particular shot where Ultravision pulled a Galactus and multiplied his size by like a billion and then proceeded to take a huge bite out of that universe. Although he didn't do this move again, this power ranks as number one solely because it got us all buzzing about Galactus. It was both effective and stylish. And style counts for a lot around here. 